All right, good evening, everyone. My name is Timothy Gunter, Managing Director, NetWave Solutions Jamaica Limited. We are an information technology company. We provide solutions and services to our customers. And this evening, I would just like to have a brief discussion with you, my valued customers and friends about network security and what it means as we go into these new, this new era of data protection, data protection laws. Let me start by saying I have a lot of customers and we have friends who are in the business of collecting people's data. And I speak, for example, pharmacies, doctor's offices, medical centers, hospitals, lawyers' offices. And these companies need to understand that handling people's data is very important. It's a new era, it's a new age, and people are more sensitive now about their data than even before. That is why even if you notice, if you notice with the banks, the banks still have persons lined up in the sun to go in because they'd rather go into the bank to deal with an individual than to trust using an ATM. And so our role here is to help to educate both the business owners and the customers so that you know what to do, what to expect, and we are here to hold your hands and to support you in this. I want to share some slides with you as we begin to talk about the handling of personal data. And I trust that as I share this presentation with you, which was done by Peter Brown from the United Kingdom, that you will find this information very informative and it will help you as you make the transition into the new era of handling, sharing, and dealing with your data. So I'm gonna run through a few slides. So giving all the, the, the rights to the person who prepared this document, Peter Brown, Group Manager, Technology Policy, which is a public cybersecurity digital health net, ICC Board, Broad Street, sorry, Birmingham, and that is found in the United Kingdom. All right. So I want to just run, because the openness for public bodies is the Freedom of the Information Act, Environmental Information Regulations, RSPI Inspire, Privacy for Individuals, Data Protection Act, EDAS, and trust services. But I want to run quickly to where I really want to be. All right. Now, this is a slide that I really want us to focus on this evening. All right, let me see if I can make this as much good. Number one. Personal data must be processed fairly and lawfully. Personal data must be processed for limited purposes. Personal data must be adequate, relevant, and not excessive. Personal data must be accurate and where necessary kept up to date. Personal data must not be kept for longer than necessary. Personal data must be processed in line with data subject rights. Personal data must be processed securely. Personal data must not be transferred to other countries without adequate data protection. I want to quickly run through each of these bullet points just to give a quick talk, discussion on them. Personal data must be processed fearfully and law, fairly and lawfully, sorry. It means that when you are 
sharing your data. It must be fair. You must have a clear understanding as to why you're sharing that data. And that data must be shared within the remits and the laws of the country to which you are. So you must know the laws and the protections and the rights that you have in sharing your data so that you don't just get up and because somebody comes and says, oh, you need to get, I need to get this data. You just jump and give the data. If you are in doubt before sharing your data, consult a lawyer, a reputable lawyer who can guide you into what you should do. Personal data must be processed for limited purposes. In other words, your personal data must not be processed for, you, you're going to take out a car loan and you're sharing your data, but that data is going to be used to do marketing ads for the financial institution and to share with other all and sundry. No, the data that you share must be specific and you should sign the document, read all documents before you sign it, ensure that you read because that data, and if it says that, would you like your data to be shared for marketing as don't select that. Your data should be for the purpose that it is intended and that purpose only. Personal data must be adequate, relevant, and not excessive. In other words, if it is that you are getting a loan and you need your TRN, your driver's license and whatever, it shouldn't be that in order to get a loan from, um, for, to buy a car, for example, they are asking you to go and do, to, to, um, to produce your HIV report and to produce all unnecessary data that has no relevance to what is being transacted. So in other words, your personal data must be relevant. It must be adequate. It should, feel, it should fit the demand of, of the requirements of what you are, the business you are transacting. It should be relevant to that transaction. And it should, be, it should not be excessive. In other words, it should not exceed what is required. Personal data must be accurate. So that information that you are sharing must be up to date. So you're not going to share an expired passport and driver's license. It must be accurate. It must have your correct address. And where necessary, it must be kept up to date. Personal data must not be kept for longer than is necessary. So Institutions, for example, if you take out a loan and that loan has been closed out, then there are certain relevant pertinent documents that should be re returned to you or should be destroyed. They are no longer required and they should not be kept longer than necessary. Personal data must be processed in line with the data subject's rights. Then again, you can consult your lawyer if you are in doubt. Personal data must be processed securely so it must not be sent over unsecure networks and, and, um, and, and, and copied on, on printers. And I want to say this because many times persons have printers in their organization that do not have, that are not encrypted. They, are, they don't have proper security. And one of the ways that hackers can get people's data is by information being scanned using unsecured devices and over unsecured networks. So you should ensure that whoever you are sharing your data with, they are processing your data securely to protect you. Personal data must not be transferred to other countries without adequate protection. So in other words, your information should not be moving from Jamaica to the United States or to England or to, um, or to India or to China without you being sure of what that data is being used for and that it will be adequately protected. And that, that is holding governments of countries to account that they should ensure that the citizens of their countries are protected when their data is being transferred so that it goes with protection, All right? Let's jump ahead. 
why bother? Enforcement and reputational damage. Now, let me say this. In an age where there is a lot of hacking and you have persons' data being used, being cloned, persons are now using persons' data to open bank accounts in their names, take out loans in their names, buy cars in their names. Yes, all of those stuff. Person's data is being used to clone their various bank accounts to create passports in their name. You are there as Tom Brown and there's another Tom Brown with all of your identification probably carrying out all type of illegal activities. So your data is critical. Your private information is critical that whoever you are sharing it with is duty bound to protect it. And so there are enforcement actions and there can be reputational damage for not protecting people's data. I'm going to sh share some, some information with you. In the United Kingdom, and many persons, when they get into challenges and they feel that they are not dealt with fairly, especially in Jamaica, we love to run to the Privy Council as the appellate court. Now, this, this fine is being done in Great Britain, in England, where is the home of that appellate court the Privy Council. So I'm not sure if a company should get itself in data protection issues that the Privy Council will be of much help. And here it is that loss of personal information, it cost one company 150,000 pounds. Nearly 60,000 customers were affected. Now, I have had this discussion with many of my customers and I say, listen, you can't be running Windows 7 and Windows Server 2003 and 2008 and all those old operating systems that have no form of security or protection. You are not prepared to invest in ensuring that your systems are up to date and people's data is protected. You're collecting their medical records, their passports, their driver's license, their birth certificates. And think about it. Think about it carefully. All of this data is being stored within your organization and it is open to hackers because there is no form of security, your operating systems are either what I would call you now um, bandulu in Jamaican terms, right? Where, um, where, where several product keys are used to onboard that one license and you pay a little fee, but it doesn't cost you anything much. And you are using those operating systems, using unsecure computers and servers, using networks that have no form of security or encryption on them to handle persons' sensitive data that can be open to hackers. No, this is a dangerous thing. And it, is, it boils down to a matter of being penny wise and pound foolish because many persons operating business say, oh, you know, I can't afford to spend this money to buy updated current software with a relevant security. And so they just go ahead. They collect people's data. They collect people's money. They put their information in these unsecured networks that if a hacker gets on it, think of a doctor's office that sees sometimes up to 20, 30 patients per day and multiply that by the 365 days of the year. And think about the number, the amount of data files that doctors' offices, pharmacies, hospitals handle. It is important 
that those who are handling people's data and, and, and you know, I'll move on to even some of these um, micro lending agencies. It is important that when you're handling people's data, you handle it with care. And we have seen instances even in Jamaica where, we've, where, where we, have fought, we have seen where customers' data have been compromised. And uh, you know, we know that some of these companies have taken steps to protect them from, from future occurrences, but it is what it is. It has happened and, and, and um, you know, we need to do our best to ensure that it does not in the, fir in, in the first place. Find after failing to keep fertility patients' personal information secure. 200,000 pounds. Record fine for security failings that allowed a cyber attack. 400,000 pounds. Publish sensitive personal data in online planning documents. So, you know, this is another thing where even, even users within organizations, there is no security and authentication um, on these networks that allow or block certain things from happening, certain things from being documents from being emailed, certain things from being scanned over the network and all of those stuff. These things are not in place. And what happens is that by the click of a button, somebody sent a wrong information out. It is out there in the public domain and people's private information has become public. And these are hefty fines. And you know, the data, I must say, the data protection law is being reviewed in parliament soon and very soon those laws will be in effect. And in Jamaica, if our companies or businesses are not ready and up to the task of ensuring that their systems are in place, then what can happen is that many will face lawsuits for people's data which would have gotten into the wrong hands. And now with data protection laws, it is going to make it mandatory that certain things are in place. And if you are found in breach, the fines can be heavy. Some of these fines can render your business bankrupt, shut down, never to open again. And it may even take it to a personal level. So, you know, we have to be dependent on even how you're business is structured because if you know the company's office of Jamaica, if you are doing a business trading as, then all legal obligations are yours. So, you know, you have to be very careful. I'm going to look at some, share some information with you. And I'm going to speak directly now to businesses to some extent and customers to another extent. To the left-hand side, 77% concerned organizations not keeping their data secure. That means only 30, only um, 23, sorry, percent of companies have any serious interest in keeping their data secure. So 70, 70% of, of concerned organizations have not been keeping their data secure. And that is serious information because it means that 77% of businesses that persons where this, this, um, this, this survey was done, right? 77% of, and you're talking about a first world country, 77% of concerned organizations were not keeping their data secure. I can imagine if we should run a survey like that in Jamaica, what it would come up to be. It would be probably even more seriously telling because persons just believe that it is okay to take people's data, put it on unsecured networks, put it on, on unprotected um, servers and unprotected um, software and and just believe that it is okay. So here it is, 20% have trust and confidence in organizations storing their data. 14% think they have control over their personal data. 20% would stop using company services after 
hearing about a data breach, which means that 80% of those people, even though they heard that the company had a data breach, would continue doing business and will continue putting their data in those companies if without even getting some form of clarification and some form of assurance that what caused the breach has been corrected. Now, here's where it's frightening. Only 10% understand how their personal data is being used, which means 90% of persons don't understand how their personal data is being used, don't understand how it is being stored, don't understand what is being done with it. And so for the most part, hackers see it as big business because there is 90% of the population that doesn't understand how their personal data is being used. 84% would have a negative view of a company that didn't tell them about a data breach, right? But they would have a negative view, but only 20% would stop using that company's services. So here you have it on both sides of the fence, both from companies and from individuals. There is not that much duty of care in protecting data until somebody squeal out that, oh, money gone out of my account. Or they realize that they go to the tax office one day to license their vehicle and they hear they have 30 outstanding tickets and they have not gotten an outstanding traffic. They don't have a traffic ticket much more to have one outstanding. And when you investigate, only to find that there is another John Brown using your TRN, using your driver's license with your picture, everything, because your information was given to a company that did not protect your data. Or you yourself used those information on devices, your laptop, your tablet, your phones that had no form of proper security on it. And so the data went into, the, into wrong hands. And here what happened now, since COVID, and I'm speaking to my lovely friends who are teachers. Since COVID, a lot of you have been opening up your devices to allow students to come in on your Zoom or your Google um, Classroom. How much protection do you have on your device? Your device that you're opening up to have students who are very smart, very tech savvy, probably more tech savvy than you are coming onto your platform without any form of security. And you have on that. That is where you do your online banking now. As a bank is restricting face-to-face, -face, so you have your online banking, your username, your password, your login and your view, your balances. Right, so they if they set up a, um, a, 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 a hack between your device and their device, they can see what you are seeing, right? Even without you having to authenticate anything because they put something on, 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 on that works underneath your operating system that allows them to have access to your device. Yes, talking about cyber attacks. And guess what happens? All of your information, you have your birth certificate on your computer, a copy of it. You have your driver's license, a copy of it on your computer. You have your passport, a copy of it on your computer. All of that information is open as you allow students and parents too, who will allow even other students to come on, to share on your platform for homework and all of those things. Folks, this is the way of the world and it's not going to change. 
So it's not about saying, well, I will not allow anybody on my platform again. It is about saying, I need to ensure that I have all the proper security on my device to prevent any breach or any compromise to my personal data. And that is what, that is what this little webinar presentation is about this evening, to let you know that you don't have to become a victim. What you need to do is to allow the proper resources to be placed on your devices to protect it. No, data protection, cybersecurity. What is data protection? Everyone has a right to respect his, to respect, has a right to respect for his private family life, his home and his correspondence. So what is that? His private, his private information, his family life, information about his family, his home, his personal address, personal telephone numbers, all of those things, and his correspondence, which is his emails, text messages, WhatsApp messages. Everyone has a right for privacy for all of these. It is, it is a right. It's not a privilege. So you need to ensure that whatever you are doing, whoever you are transacting business with, whoever you are interacting with, you need to ensure that whoever you are doing those interactions with are persons who have credible protection of their data. And even so, for your own personal protection, the devices that you use should be very well protected with up-to-date software. Many persons run away and say, oh, Microsoft updating, updating every minute, and it, it's, it, it, when I want to do something, and you pause the update, and you stop the update, and you keep using the device, and it comes up again for a warning, and you pause it again, and you say, oh, let it wait. When you are doing that, you are preventing Microsoft from putting, you see, these companies, Microsoft and other companies, what they do, they are planning ahead of the hackers. And so when they send out updates many times, especially when you see security updates, it is to prevent your device from something that is out there. Now, when you keep delaying that and you say you don't have the time to allow your computer to update, what you're actually doing, you are allowing your device to become vulnerable, vulnerable to attacks. And so what will happen is that sooner or later, somebody is going to get onto your device and somebody is going to start stealing your information and you are going to be the one who is going to suffer for it. So allow your computer to update. How many persons have antivirus software on, 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 on their computers? And how many times do you scan those, um, just, just run a scan on, 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 on your computer? Very seldom many do it. And that's something that every individual who has a device should learn to do for him or herself. Allow your computer to update, check for updates, and also scan your device from time to time to ensure that it is free from malware and cyber attacks and viruses and ransomware. And I'm going to speak to that in a little while. The purpose of this convention is to protect, and this is the Council of Europe Convention 108, to protect any, any individual, whatever his or her nationality or residence, with regards to the processing of their personal data, thereby contributing to respect for his or her human rights and fundamental freedoms, and in particular, the right to privacy. So guess what? It is your human right to have ensure that your personal data is protected, right? The ability to protect or defend the use of cyberspace, a global domain. And it's frightening that many businesses would not even invest. For some Microsoft, even Google, you would pay like about probably 12 US dollars, I think it is for an entire year to get a domain. 
and many persons are running businesses and it's gspharmacy at gmail.com. It should be George Brown at gspharmacy.com under a secure network registered as a secure domain so that your customer's information is secure. And it is important, folks. And if we don't start looking at it now, this thing is going to run up on us and many persons are going to find that it is going to be a severe impact on their business. The protection of devices, services, and network, and the information on them from theft and damage. It is important business owners. It is important that the devices within your organization are protected. The services, many of you offer services that persons can log in on your website and buy and all of those things. How secure is your platform? When last have you checked on the security certificates on your website? Are they up to date? Do you ensure that whoever is managing your, your, your website that you pay that annual fee to ensure that the security certificate is up to date? Because if it is not, you are putting people's credit card, debit card, and personal information on an unsecured network, which is prone to theft and the information on them and the networks. You have a Wi-Fi with no proper network security that people can come in and anybody comes in. Listen, business owners, you should have an internal network. If you have cases where you have persons that may need to come in to access services via the internet within your organization, you need to ensure that you have a guest network that allows them to access, which is separate from your internal network. Because it means that if they are able to log in on your internal network, they can have access to information that is on your network. So business owners need to understand that it's a game changer now. And so we need to get to the times, we need to be in a space where we are preparing and making sure that the data that we handle for people are protected. All activities necessary to protect the network, the information systems, right? That's the network, the connectivity, your switch, your, your routers, your, um, the, the router from your ISP, that's your internet service provider. All of those things are properly protected with proper passwords. Information systems, that is your server, Right? You should be using Active Directory on your server, which can manage users, not just something where everybody can just go and just log on and every, every user should be set up on the network using Active Directory with their proper authentication to log in with their username and their password so you can be able to run reports, who did what, who was on the network, what was done, managed through your server, their users, and affected persons from cyber threats. This is important, folks. We can't run away from this one. We have to get it right. And many persons are not willing. I am an authorized representative of HPE, Hewlett Packard Enterprise. And I can tell you this, that these companies have been, this company has been allowing servers from low end, right up. So you can start small, but you need to ensure that you have a network where your data is not secured on a computer, that if it crash, our persons can just plug in a, 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 a thumb drive and copy data. No, it should be on reserve. It should be secured on a server managed with policies so that persons can have certain access they are, they are you can limit access you can control access to person's data right that is important 
It's very important, folks. Invest in a server, invest in a network, proper network system to protect person's data. Invest in proper operating systems so that the data of your customers are free from cyber threats. And here it is, protection of information within networks and system, not just personal data, but includes personal data. A good standard of data protection requires good cyber security. So you need to have good cyber security. And not only that, right? Let me also add this, that you need to, while you are doing that, how ensure that you have proper backup. Good. Cloud backup. Secure cloud backup with proper authentication. So that in case, for example, your server, and, and you know, we are moving into the world now of virtual servers, where, 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 where you can actually have all your data virtualized. So, and you know, but that's, that's another subject for another day because that's another whole session that I'll need to get into, but we'll be doing a lot more of these. So you can look, look out for a lot more of these webinars where I'll be in educating customers. So you know exactly what to do and how we can help you to get where you need to get. But I say this, back up your data, right? What if Jamaica should have a natural disaster? God forbid. Your business is virtually destroyed. Your place is mash up or a fire should come and destroy your business. Where is your data? In some whole heap of filing cabinets. You should be scanning and securing a lot of your data. A lot of your information should be on your server backed up to the cloud, right? And we represent Veeam, right? Which allows persons to be able to have their data backed up in secure environment. You have Google Cloud, you have Amazon Web Services. There are so many options that, you, that customers have that we must ensure that if something should go wrong with your server, that you can restore the data to your to a new server if needs be and begin to work without having to start from scratch losing all of people's personal data some some people are running big lawyers offices big medical facilities with all the data on one computer at the receptionist area no backup No form of security on this on, on, on the computer. And so that is why we are, are having so much issues now with people and the security of their data. Personal data breaches are a breach of security. Can't overemphasize that. A breach of security leading to accidental or unlawful destruction, loss, alteration, unauthorized disclosure of or access to personal data transmitted, stored, or otherwise processed, right? And here it is, a breach of security leading to accidental or unlawful destruction, loss, alteration, unauthorized disclosure of or access to personal data transmitted, stored, or otherwise processed in connection with the provision of a publicly available electronic communication service. And I, I want to talk to my customers, especially end users. Be careful of public Wi-Fi's, especially to do sensitive transactions, your banking transactions, accessing your email and all of those things. Because what you do when you go on a public Wi-Fi, you are opening up and exposing your data, your passwords to hackers who know that in an age where people are moving to internet and some persons don't have the internet access, they can't afford to put on a lot of data. So they are happy to use public facilities in order to access and to do certain information. Be careful because it can be to your own detriment. Be careful of airports and parks and all of those places that 
there it is open to the public because hackers are scooping around. You see a lot of persons sitting down there and there. Some of them are pretending as though they are using it. They are there with their devices, tracking to see a lot of persons who come on whose security is not up to date, whose, com whose, whose computers don't have any form of cyber security or any form of, 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 of virus protection. And they are there and they see the vulnerability and they say, aha. Uh -huh. Yes. Ransomware. Breach of confidentiality, breach of integrity, and breach of availability. Now, what, what is ransomware? Ransomware is the hackers stealing data and requiring a ransom for its return. Now, we looked at a slide before where it spoke about persons who 84% of persons would have concerns about doing business or would, would, would view negatively a company that has data protection breaches. And so for many companies who become the target and the victim of ransomware, what they end up doing, they end up spending millions of dollars secretly to recover this data so that their breach does not become public and the reputation of their company is not damaged. So ransomware is actually a big business. Hackers take your data and what they do with that data, they make that data unavailable. They make that data unavailable to you That's what they have done. They make that data unavailable to you. So you are unable to retrieve that data unless you pay significant sums of money to recover that data. Folks, that can be avoided. That can be avoided. The breach of confidentiality of customers' data, the breach of the integrity of your network and your business, and the breach of availability of the information to run your business, including personal, per, person's personal data, can be avoided. Consider the effect it may have on many individuals and also on your company. Get it right. Get it right, folks. Get it right. And I'm just going to jump to, because we have to wrap up this webinar. We're going to do a phase two, but I want to touch some things. Some persons are taking account of state of the art and cost of implementation. We can tailor the implementation to suit your business to suit your needs. Nature, scope, context, and the purpose of processing is what we take into consideration. The likelihood and the severity of the risk to rights and freedoms. So the controller and the processor shall do what? Implement technical organizational measures to ensure a level of security appropriate to the risk. In other words, what are we saying here? The more data you are storing for people is the higher the level of security you should have in place to mitigate the risk. So we will come in and we will do an assessment. We will go through, we will assess your network and your security that is in place. And we will make recommendations to you. And the cost of assessment is a small price to pay for the cost to recover your data from ransomware. I'm putting that out there this evening. The cost of assessment, the cost of implementing, the cost of making sure 
that you are your data is not vulnerable to threats, to attacks, to information risk, to your security being compromised, to protect the integrity, the confidentiality, and the availability of your data, to ensure that you have cyber resilience. It is a small price to pay for protecting your data and not having ransomware to deal with. You should always have policies within your organization. And I know many persons are going to say, oh, you know, we are small businesses. We don't have the resources to employ an IT person. NetWave Solutions is here to help you. So we have our structures, we have our systems in place that will allow us to help you with remote data management on highly secure and effective and efficient software that we will help you. We can manage remotely. We can give you reports on your network, frequent reports, and with HPE, we can use solutions and software to protect and to mitigate against risks to your network even before they happen. That's a conversation that we need to have. And for every customer out there who is listening to this webinar this evening, this presentation, that's a conversation. If you are not there yet, we need to be having this conversation and NetWave Solutions is here to help you. We need to get it right implement appropriate technical organizational measures to implement data protection principles, integrate necessary safeguards into the processing to meet the requirements of the data protection laws. And that is for England, but it's, it's coming to Jamaica very soon, right? I'm just going to run here quickly. So the last couple of slides, right? So you need to have cyber protection, boundaries to your firewall and internet gateways. And we spoke about that in, um, previously, right? Ensure that the boundaries and the protections are in place. Secure configuration, right? Passwords that are not easily hacked, right? Access control. You need to control the access to your network and to your data. Malware protection and patch management, right? So all of those things on your, on your server and on your network to ensure that there is, it is secure tight. It's locked, folks. So that when persons strike there, they will have a hard time to knock down your wall in order to get in, to move your data. And we are here to help you with that. Protecting personal data in online services, learning from the mistakes of others. And we spoke about that before, right? All those online services, the websites, the this, the that. Folks, you're running small businesses, right? A lot of persons are out there you now pushing out, or we have websites, um, where we can, um, we can have ends, beginning and ends, right? All of those things. You need to ensure, it is in your best interest to ensure that on your end, where you are putting in your information, that you are accessing secure networks. Because it's very easy. By just putting in that credit card, security key, oh yes that that credit card will not be used just to buy chicken, but will be used to shop till somebody drop. And then you may end up picking up that tab. So folks, it is important. Identify, protect, detect, respond and recover. That's what we are here to help. So we are here to help you to identify the risk on your network, to bring you to see that you need to protect it, to be able to detect 
when problems are becoming, before they happen, to be able to respond in a timely matter, in a timely manner, and to be able to recover without any significant loss to your data or your customer's data, right? And you have data portability, protection officers, all of those things. These are other subjects that I will get into in another presentation. So be prepared, do well. Software updates, folks, I can't overemphasize this. Updates are designed to protect your software from cyber attacks, from viruses, from ransomware, from all other attacks that may move on your network. Folks, please spend the time, update your software. When you see that little yellow icon that comes up there that says software is downloaded and ready to update, don't say I am too busy, I don't have the time, let that stay. And you bypass the restart to, to, um, to, 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 to download and to install and you keep bypassing it. And sometimes, you know what happens? Many times your computer becomes slow because there are a lot of viruses and ransomware and malwares that are coming on your computer. And because these updates are not being done and because there is so much happening in the background, your device becomes slow and you begin to say, what is happening? My device is not working. It begins to freeze and it begins to shut down all of those things. It is because the software in there is warning you that something is going awry. Folks, do not ignore the call to update your software. Ignoring the call to update your software is like hearing the alarm going off on your house or on your car and you stop it. Somebody's breaking into your house or somebody's breaking into your car and it triggers the alarm and you're going to stop it. And every time the alarm goes off, you stop it. You are giving that person more access to finish the job that they have started because you are stopping the warning bell. Allow your device to update. Access controls, very important. Have secure passwords. Make sure that, especially in the business environment, hospitals, doctor's offices, lawyers, small business lending agencies, banks, Schools, how could I leave that one out? Schools, this is a serious one. Because schools, you are collecting a lot of persons' personal data. For children, birth certificates, IDs, all those things. And many schools, as I speak, do not have these structures in place. So soon and very soon, parents can end up suing schools. And many of you are running private schools. Right? for the data that has been compromised by the lack of controls on your network, monitoring. And as I said before, we are willing to work with you. We'll help you to monitor the network. Testing and the encryption. All of those are the do the basics well. Identify, protect, respond, recover, audit, Practice, learn, improve. I end this presentation. NetWave Solutions America Limited is here to help you. We can take you from start to finish. We will ensure that we put you on the right path so that when the data protection audit begins and the technology of your company comes up for audit based on data protection laws, then you will have already been on the right side of the fence. Give us a call. We are located at shop number four, Anik Plaza, Chantilly, Savannah Lamar, Westmoreland. And we serve not only Jamaica, but right across the Caribbean. 
we can stay right here and we can work with you wherever you are. Give us a call, 876-955-3574, 876-955-3489. Visit our website, www.netwavesolutionsja.com or you may email us at sales at netwavesolutionsja.com. You can also WhatsApp us on 876-955-3574. And you can find us on Facebook, on LinkedIn. So there are several ways to reach out to us. Contact us. We are here to help you. Don't become a victim of cyber attacks. Don't become a victim of ransomware. Don't become a victim of malware. Protect your data as you protect your life because it is your identity is who you are. Protect your data. We will help you. We have all the software. We have the solutions. And it, we can do it for you at affordable rates. Talk to us. We are here to serve you. Thank you very much for spending the time to listen to this webinar presentation. And if you have any questions, feel free to send us a message. You can even go on our website and write on our website. There is an option right at the bottom where you can send us a message. It will come to us and we'll respond to you. Thank you very much and have yourself. A wonderful evening. Keep safe. Wear your mask. Sanitize. Keep your social distancing. Keep safe and keep COVID free. And when your time comes, go and take the vaccine if you are so inclined. Because protecting your life is also another means of protect identity protection so that you can remain alive. And while you're alive, ensure that your personal data is also protected. Thank you. Have a good evening.